Yay Networks. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Finished Podcast. I hate to fly so much, and I have a couple of trips ongoing coming up right now. Uh, as you're listening to this, I'm actually probably somewhere across the world. But I, Brian looks at me like this, and I turned to him last night and said, I do not know why I am being served a plane crash content on Instagram, on TikTok. I know there's they're remaking plane crash movies that were already made. We don't need to be making movies again about planes crashing. And everyone's told me, oh, wow, Jenna, don't watch it. Like some people have told me they're not even scared to fly and they couldn't make it through the scene of this, that new Netflix movie, whatever it's called. It's like basically the remake of Alive um, where the sports team crashes, right? In the Andes Mountains and whatever. They say the scene in that movie is so upsetting um, and realistic. I... No, I'm, don't worry, not watching it, will not watch it. I mean, I have, hopefully as I'm speaking to you right now and I'm in Paris, I'm there and alive. We'll see what so, the future okay, holds. okay, let's say we are stranded in the middle of the Indy Mountains. Oh, good, I'm glad you skipped the whole plane crash part. Yes, uh, would I eat a human? Sure, of course wait. I would. Wait, in the plane there is only Remy, your mom, myself, and yourself. What do you start eating first? I first I'd look through luggage for like things that you might already be edible. run through every. Okay, crumb. so you just get to the point that I have to choose a human. Yeah, probably candy, right? I, I don't know. What about you? <sighs> if I just choose my own mom and you don't choose the mother-in-law. This was a question. I answered it. Boom. I don't, I'm thinking about it. Like, I'm being very serious about these. Like, you don't know when that's going to happen. Um, I wouldn't kill her to eat her. I would just like, we can, you can live for a couple of weeks without food, right? I think it's three weeks. Yeah, but you're already like, like about to. So we're there. Yo, you're, you're there. You're there. My answer stays the same. I'm sorry, mom. I love you, but I would eat you. Well, you're already eating her. You're not going to finish her in one swoop. Well, soup. I'm pretty sure I could have a leg, you know? Okay, yeah. See, look at Fran. Not making decisions, not having boundaries, and just piggybacking I'll off what you, I do. you, you know? Me, you yeah, need Remy's 100%. mother. After that comment, why not? Yeah, because I didn't want to piggyback on yours. You eat candy, you're going to be chopped, you're going to be nutrient. And nutri you're going to eat the mother of I'm your gonna, child. Well, better eating the mother of the child than the mother of the mother of my child. Pressure me. I will never forget this moment. I'll never forget this moment. Well, just don't uh, try to forget a little bit while we're flying to Mexico. We don't pass the Indy Mountains. Though. Try to forget a little bit. I picked up Xanax from my girlfriend yesterday. And I, because I drug myself, I say into oblivion. I mean, not really. Like I take a Xanax or a half of a Xanax and like we'll have a drink or something before the flight. I don't. I don't ever want to have some sort of international incident where I land and I've been duct taped to the seat. I don't think I would react that way. Um, I don't do any other kind of weird. You don't want to go viral that way now? No, not, not my dream. Um, no, but I, I, yeah, I just, I hate to fly so much. I was joking with her. She goes, oh my gosh, I can barely even take a, a part of that Xanax bar. I would be passed out for two days. I go, yes, a normal person without anxiety in a flight, it would knock you out. If I took a Xanax right now, it would knock me out. You know, I'd be so drowsy. I couldn't keep my eyes open. But when you're high anxiety, it's for anxiety, right? So if you're high anxiety um, and my level of anxiety, I don't know, know if you always see it, but um, I, I mean, I'm certain I'm going to die every time I step on that airplane, which I know you're thinking, then why fly? You know, if you feel that you're going to die, why fly? I don't know, because I know deep down, I tell myself it's safe. It's safer than driving. I don't want it to limit me from cool experiences. And I love to travel and I love to be at the destination. Uh, but gosh, I wish I enjoyed flying more because I could just relax for nine hours and sit there. And But I'm already thinking about this flight, man. And I'm just like, I've been losing sleep over it. And I'm going to take a Xanax just but that to That is a good thing. Keep losing sleep 
because then you're going to be super tired. You're just going to pass out. I'm not. I remember when you and I went to Paris and when I was pregnant and I, you know, used miles so we could do business class because I'm like, this is great. It'll be so cool. And it was just so, miles wasted for me. Like I should have just, we should have used the miles for Fran's seat and I should have preserved my miles for, I don't know, any other scenario down the road. Because I'm telling you, Fran is king. You know, you are champagne, meal, movie, out, cozy. I'm like trying to reach over, you know, he's so far away in the business class. I'm reaching over being like, it was so bumpy overnight. I just hated it. And I, I'm, I'm just so pregnant getting up, get, you know, getting up to pee every couple minutes and terrified, you know, cause I couldn't even really drink or drug myself into oblivion, but it was just, I might as well have just been sitting upright in economy. And that's how I feel. That's how I'll be this time around. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's where I'm at. I thought I'd document it. But this is the thing. People that aren't scared of flying. You want to go coach to Mexico? I don't care. I don't care anymore. I really don't what class I'm flying because I just hate flying so much that I could just be, I could be sitting in the bathroom. I don't mind. You know, I could just sit on that toilet the whole time. I sit in the bathroom before. Yeah, I could do that. I don't care. Were you being smuggled? No, it was in a, in a private jet that. You sit in the bathroom. You know, there's a seat. In yeah. yeah. Um, that's a nice way to drop. I mean, that's sad, actually, oh, yeah. that you didn't have a better seat. That was kind of like weird. You're dropping. That's I'll a weird, that's a weird flex. Like, I've flown private, but I sat in the bathroom. Were, were you, uh, yeah, were, were you being smuggled? Was it we allowed? We had a lot of people in that place. Are you just talking about how, like, like, it's a seat that you have to get off of and close the door to go to the bathroom yeah. on the private plane? Yeah. Well, that makes us sound like assholes. Yeah. Okay, fine. I take it back. I do. If I, I, don't, I don't care how I fly. If I was flying that way, fine. I have actually. Oh, that, so, the few, so your anxiety is actually a little snob. My anxiety is. No, I still get really nervous flying yeah, privately. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's at least like more, but more your enjoyable. Your biographers will be way kinder if you die in a private plane than if you buy in a commercial. Like they will write that about you. I flew that JSX airline. I don't know if y'all have seen this one. I flew JSX from here to Florida um, on the last time I traveled, actually. And it, that was a cool flying experience. Something that adds to my anxiety, I will say this. It's not the private flying because it's like, oh, it's a private plane. It's the, um, the, the, the anticipation, right? Does this make sense? It's the it's a different experience and JSX was similar. So JSX, if you're not familiar, is this kind of new hybrid in between, you know, it's like charter flight, but you're sharing it with strangers. So they have the plane outfitted. I think there were only 25 seats on the plane I took. So it's a pretty narrow plane, but it's one seat on one side and one on the other, but you have a lot of room. And, um, and I was flying with a, with a friend at the time, the same one I'm going to Paris with. And, uh, it was super cool. Cause you go into where you would fly privately. You can get there five minutes before your flight and they check your bag and you sit there and then you like go out through the hangar and get on the plane. And I think there's an element of flying that way that you don't have enough time for the buildup, you know, the airport security, the smells at the airport. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It smells like the airport, the gas, like all of the jet engine fuel and stuff. And all of that, I think, starts to build into my my fears and then all the hours or the delays and just the whole cattle call of boarding a plane. I think all of that kind of gives me what? three hours to get even more anxious. Whereas when I flew JSX, I just kind of pulled up, got dropped off, got on a plane. I didn't have as much time for the anxiety to build. If that, does that make sense? I think there is an element of that for sure. So it's not the private flying. It's just that you have a lack of, you know, exposure that, uh, the anticipation is not that. Yeah. And like, sure. If I'm going down, I'd rather be like drinking a glass of champagne, talking with like facing friends than you know, next to some fucking stranger, you know, being like, this fucking sucks. So if anything happens to me, y'all just know I was very upset. I was very, very, more, more upset than the average person. Yeah. And then, I mean, why do we need horror movies about this? And this is the last thing I'll say about it because I know you don't want to hear me bitch about flying. Why do we need movies about this when you see the real news? People almost getting sucked out of airplane, doors flying off. And that guy got a whooping $1,500 check. So I read, I don't know if that's true, really? actually. But uh, he, I think he accepted a $1,500 check. And he said, In a bye lifetime bye. of therapy? Like, that is a crazy story. Those I don't know. Don't quote me. I saw, I saw that news 
in a source that is not reliable. So those Max planes, I mean, we already talked about the issues they had before, right? I thought they got pulled off the market for like making nose dives no, all the time. No, but you get a special rate if you if you fly in those Max. If I go on any of these upcoming, I look at the flight I'm on. But if it changed out for some reason, I sat down and I see like. 737 max i am standing up and making a scene and leaving that airplane and then that plane may fly safely and land and you know but whatever i couldn't handle it there's no way uh, i they the, pulled them the right now at least i'll do is just to make sure that i'm buckled you know i becoming a mom's only made it worse obviously when i fly with fran and remy and it kind of goes back to a couple episodes ago when I, I think Fran, like I was just so happy that he decided he actually now has something work related that came up. So him and Remy are waiting on me to return and we're going to go to Mexico City together. I told him, I know it's it's kind of one of those things and they teach you in therapy. You don't always have to understand where your partner's coming from to like acknowledge it. I mean, it, it's, it is, it, it goes with everything. You don't have to understand why I feel a certain way. It's not about you thinking I'm right or understanding it. It's just acknowledging that it's really, that it's really powerful and meaningful to me. And please, like, just let me fly with y'all. I do, I do a lot better because I'm distracted with Remy. Um, I have y'all with me, so I know, you know, yeah, I'm still scared, but I know if something happened, um, at least we're together, you know. And I think that's what's scary is I knew if he flew alone, I'd be thinking about them the whole day they were flying. And I'm sorry, y'all. I know you're like, Jenna, calm the fuck down. I'm trying. I'm getting myself all worked up. Three deep breaths. <sighs> yeah. It's right. the only thing that gets me this way. The only thing. I don't think I'm scared of anything else. Am I? I don't think I'm scared, scared of anything else. I mean, there's things that I, think I would. I'm, I might be afraid of one or two things Insects. here and there. Bugs. Um, but things have exacerbated a lot with a kid, for sure. Yeah. Like, I don't think I, I had... You're scared of like Remy with a utensil, uh, a baby with a fork. <laughs> I hope you all are, but yes, like a baby with a fucking fork, it, it's frightening to himself and to myself. So we're gonna have a little caveman kid who doesn't know how to use utensils. Um, they're utensils for kids, but anyhow, that's not where we're we're going. Um. And I forgot where we were going. So, oh yeah. So a lot, of, of. a lot of fears have bubbled into the surface just because of, like, I was able to do the craziest things and not being afraid. Like, what is the worst that could happen? I die. So, yeah, I would die being extremely happy doing what I really love. Cool. Right now, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. You hear people say stuff like that. I mean, I remember reading some article about George Clooney years ago. He had a motorcycle and got in an accident in Italy. And he was like, I really only drove the motorcycle around there anyway, because it felt, you know, safer, I guess, when he was in Lake Como. But he ended up getting hit, like hit the windshield of a car, apparently, and had twins, like baby twins at home at the time with a mall and was like, I think I'm done. Well, I thought I'm that all though. happened at the same time. Like he got hit get got, got uh, into the windshield and had twins at the same time. It's like, wow, that guy is my ultimate hero. Yeah, he had twins at home when it happened. And he was just like, I can't. I think it puts like your lifestyle in perspective for sure. But I think that shows growth and maturity. And it's a good thing because you want to be, it's not that you should never have fun and that you should never do it again. But I think, yeah, any sort of reckless leaning behavior, is it worth, not being around for your kid, you know? And that's yeah. what would be going through my head. I feel that way about flying. I feel that flying is reckless sometimes, you know, which I know it shouldn't be. If y'all have any tips on that, why am I not getting more content about, um, sometimes what I do that really helps is I watch pilots. There's pilots on TikTok that'll talk about the airplane and things and, you know, and that, that does make me feel better listening to kind of the experts talk about, about stuff like that. But, um, Anyway, I, I don't know. I'll get there. I get there. If y'all have had any sort of therapy or have any advice on that, that would be great. I would appreciate it because I probably need, I don't let it stop me from traveling, but it definitely wears on me because I'm only there for 48 hours. And so by the time I like come down from the experience, I have to turn around and go back and get on another nine hour flight. So it's going to be 
oh, it's going to be rough for me. Well, I'm pretty sure the reward is going to be bigger. The reward? Yeah. Being there with your friend. Mm -hmm. All these fun events. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's some cool stuff that I get to go to. I yeah. don't get to go to everything that she's going to, but I'll tell you a little bit about the Paris trip um, when we come back from a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Four Wellness. And what an exciting product, Fran. I know we got this over the holidays and I know we've been um, trying it out a little bit, but I love when functional ingredients are made easy instead of being told I have to do X, Y, and Z and cook all these meals. Life changer. It's a life changer, yes. Yeah. So if you're like, well, what is Four Wellness? Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you hadn't, but it's a functional food brand. They have a range of snacks and supplements designed to help you get the most out of your body and mind. Actually uh, created by this performance coach named Dave Phillips. So he's worked with some of the world's highest performing athletes and he saw athletes struggling in terms of their nutrition, because, you know, athletes need even more than we do to kind of get um, all sorts of functional ingredients into their diet to be higher performing. And so he created this line, this whole range of snacks and supplements to just be, you know, more like on the go and accessible to improve your daily life. And their um, best selling product and the one that I've been trying out is uh, called the good stuff. And it's like a a, a a supplement powder that you're putting into your coffee. I mean, I guess you can put it into anything, but I like putting it into coffee. And it has five key ingredients, including L-theanine, collagen, MCT cinnamon and Himalayan salt. So, you know, the goal of this is to have better focus, reduce caffeine jitters, increase your collagen and support fat burning, which comes with the L-theanine, which is really nice. And hopefully to kind of decrease your sugar and creamer, which I know you drink black coffee or you're getting cold brew. But this but is so cool because you get all these benefits in your own coffee. You don't have to go out of your way. Right. Which is in this day and age, anything that it's convenient and it's also better uh, for your health, it's a huge thing. I try to be good with supplements, but I think it's true. I just want to, I want it to adapt to my life. I want to put it in what I'm already going to do every day. And I know I'm probably going to drink a couple of cups of coffee every day. So if I can just put it in there <laughs> and go on with my day or put it in a protein shake or something like that, that makes my life so much easier. They also have superfood focus bites, which I know would be a favorite of Fran's. This tastes like a chocolate brownie, but it has no tropics like lion's mane mushroom in there. And of course, fights inflammation, supports brain and gut health. There's also tart cherry recovery gummies to combat muscle soreness, coffee pods, more amazing products. You just need to go to Four Wellness and check it out. Head to fourwellness.com slash fittish and use the code fittish for 25% off your order. Again, that's for wellness, F O R wellness.com slash fittish for 25% off and make sure you use our promo code fittish. So they know that we sent you. Welcome back. Welcome back. So yeah, a couple of days, um, in France and then, uh, a nice trip to Mexico city. I'm actually really looking forward to being in Mexico city. I, I miss your family. I, it's really hard to not see in-laws, you know, and family for so long. I mean, your parents haven't seen Remy in a year and uh, it'll be really nice to spend some time with them. I think it's hard to because Fran FaceTimes, I mean, you FaceTime with your parents almost every single night, but you know, that's pretty surface level and it's hard for me to really communicate, you know, your parents' English is okay. Um, I mean, their English I think is better than my Spanish, <laughs> but uh, so that that can be hard, you know, because I can't really have a nice, real serious kind of conversation with them about how they are and what's going yeah. on. So it'll be so nice to spend some time there. I love going to Mexico City. Yeah, for sure. I'm very excited to be there. I'm trying to organize a birthday party for Rems. Yeah, your friends the other night, we were hanging out with a bunch of other Mexican couples uh, watching the terrible Cowboys loss and they were asking if I had ever been to a kid's birthday party in Mexico. And I'm like, no, I've now had two Mexican weddings, but no kid birthday parties. And they were like, oh, so I, I didn't really know. I thought, does your mom need, you know, do I need to send her a little bit of money to like plan it? I mean, pinatas are involved, right? Like what else happens? Nobody needs your money. No, well, I mean, when you're asking a family member to throw a party for your child, you know, I just thought it might we like help her along. No, no, no. I think, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be just a couple hundred people. Nothing <laughs> nothing crazy like that. No, no, no. Really? Somewhere around that. No. At your parents' house? 
So we're going through either of my parents' house or to have a small venue. So we don't, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm doing a head count. Right Seriously? Now. Yeah. Really? Yes. Is there a theme? Or is it just a, it's like a party. There doesn't have to be a theme like we do here. We can figure something out. It's, it's not like a themey thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a like, party. Yeah. Like a party that starts at somewhere between 10, 11 a.m. and finishes around 5 to 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And Remy sleeps at what point? Oh, Remy sleeps around 7 p.m. Okay, well, I'm excited. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do to contribute. I just wasn't, I was more asking for you to describe what a party looks like to the yeah, audience. Yeah, no, so a Mexican kids party, it's not 100% all about the kids. Got it. Well, as it is in the United States, that's why I don't really get the birthday party thing. It seems more about the parents and their friends. Yeah. When a kid doesn't really remember what's going but on. But in Mexico, it's like hard, you know? Like in Mexico, let's say there is more booze than there is juice. Yeah. Well, that doesn't surprise me one bit. I love the, I love a pinata. I mean, I haven't gotten to whack a pinata in a minute. I love a pinata filled with Mexican candy. I love, I see the pinata stores on the way to the airport in Mexico City, you know, on the side of the mm-hmm. road. These huge ones. I mean, pinatas like I've never seen before. You know that in my parents' house in their yard, they do have a piñata pole. My dad, when he built that house in the backyard. I was know, wondering what that pole was. I'm like, is this like a stripper pole? No, it's not a, it's not a pole like goes up. It, it's a pole that comes from the, bo- the fence yeah. and goes into and hangs a, out. A, like a reverse L. Mm-hmm. So, and it has like a little pulley thing. That's amazing. I'm so excited. So, yeah. well then, yeah, we need to have a piñata and teach Remy the art of piñata. piñata yeah. piñata he's, he's, he's an age. He's ready. Yeah. Give him something to beat. Yeah. With a stick or a bat, right? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm excited. All right. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. He's already very good at beating, so. I took a, if you all watch my TikToks, I already talked about this, so I apologize. But I realized that I hadn't taken a Spanish lesson since end of October. I obviously, you know, come Halloween, forget about it. Life got busy with a kid and the house and holidays and business and stuff like that. And so I I haven't taken a Spanish lesson again. And we were visiting with my friend, Alora, and she is using my Spanish teacher that I recommended on that Preply app that I like so much. And I saw her, she was making note cards and I was like, damn, I got to get back on my Spanish. So I took a lesson yesterday. Y'all, my head is going to explode because we're going through directions and how to get, you know, here, here and all the different store names and stuff like that for, you know, um, library which isn't a library it's a bookstore you know that sort of thing so we were going through all of these and I I, you know I'm getting to that point that I'm really gonna have to start memorizing and practicing with Fran and it's really really hard I greatly I have so much respect for everyone that's learned English because I do recognize that English is probably I've always heard from people it's a really hard language to learn as a second language there's a lot about it that doesn't make sense but I mean you Spanish isn't that e- Spanish. Everyone says Spanish is really easy, but it's it hasn't been easy for me. I'm really frustrated. Yeah, I don't think Spanish could be easy. No, it's not because derecha is right, yeah. but derecho is straight. Yeah. So it's right if it's feminine, and if it's masculine, you're straight. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that you just made a really good association. Yeah. Why? Well, I have to figure out ways to remember things. And then, but why is left so fucking hard to say? Izquierda. Uh, izquierda. That's fucking... A la izquierda. Yeah, that's fucking hard to say. Sometimes I ask my Spanish teacher, like, how to say something, you know, I'll interrupt and be like, well, how do I say this? Because it'll spawn a question, of course. And she'll go, oh, that's a hard one right now. Like, she knows it's too difficult for me and she doesn't want to put it on me yet. And I'm like, oh, man, how am I it's ever like, going to learn? I don't learn? get paid enough for that. Yeah, I forget what I asked her yesterday, but yes, something like that. So, no, I just, I think I'm really on this trip going to make some effort to speak. I always joke that, you know, when you're in Paris and you try and speak, you could say something and they just look at you like, do you just want to speak English? They're so snooty and disrespectful and don't even 
entertain you trying to speak French if it's not flawless and perfect. But people in Mexico, my experience, they're really nice about it. So I think I'm really going to work. I feel a little self-conscious in front of you, though, because I'll say something to you and you'll be like, huh? And I'm trying, but your mom, your mom's always good if I try and say something. Yeah, for sure. No, and it's not that I'm just like, I just sometimes don't understand. So I'm trying to gauge what you're saying. So that's why I say, huh? But um, yeah, I, I think like, I don't want to give credit to the French, but quick like side story. Long time ago, maybe six, seven years ago, I was in Berlin and I met this kid. He's a Highland Park kid from Dallas. And he was bartending in one of the restaurants and, and he's been living there for three years and he loves it. And it's like, but I cannot seem to learn how to speak German because every time that I want to practice my German with any German, they switch to Sp they switch to English right away. And it's like, well, that's rude, blah, blah, blah. I'm pretty sure it's in the society. And then you go to France and it's the same thing. It's and then I it dawned on me, like it's just so like it's hard it's hard to be the counterpart of that communication when you need to communicate asap when you have a message to send and you need to receive that message you want to make it the most efficient so people do it as kindness like i do it I, I and i notice doing it with people that are trying to practice their spanish on me and they start just saying things in Spanish that don't make much sense. And I'm sure I could have been kind and said like, oh, if you switch that word to that word, or if you switch this uh, pronoun to this, like... But what do you do? You interrupt them and talk in English? It's like, yeah, I, I, I'll, I do speak fluent English. You can use your native but language. But this is what makes it so hard for those of us that want to practice, because I need to practice... Pay someone. I... You don't that have to so pay someone. Rude. You don't have to pay someone. I you already have me. do pay someone. I well, do. Yeah, but you. I don't know the grammar, so I don't. I don't know how to teach you all those rules, like all the like the tacit uh, syllable, blah blah blah, and this and that. You want someone that knows the rules. I can practice in a chit chat situation anytime. <laughs> Yesterday we were going over, I mean, I know a lot of you speak Spanish, so it's not horribly um, uninteresting to you, but she was explaining to me, you know, doblar versus tomar that, you know, that you would say, right, doblar, is that right for turning, right, yeah. and left doblar, but then Fran kind of did that to me last night when I was going over with him, he goes, we don't use that. So I just spent a fucking hour and like $25 to learn doblar a la izquierda. Oh. Like my text is Mexican. And, um, and Dobler, the things that and he goes, we don't use that. And she told me tomorrow's to take, like you can take, to take yes, yeah, but or the, drink. <laughs> to take or to drink. How? Like Tomar, like Tomar a sip. So these are certain <sighs> rules that I don't know because, and Luli will be much better because she's actually a literature major. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, voy a tomar esta sopa. I got it. You're going to take, uh -huh. yeah, whatever you just said. Oh, I'm <laughs> going to drink water. I'm going to, voy a tomar agua. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of the same thing. Okay. Well, anyway, you all get it. It's fucking hard. And then you tell me it means this, but it also means this. And it's like, how do you ever learn? I mean, I get by context, but it's hard out of the gate. Practice. Uh-huh. But like, it makes sense for take, yeah. I've been in this country for 15 years, and I still have a lot of, make a lot of mistakes all the time. This is why I tell Fran, he uses chat, GPT, which I think the use of it right now is so great. We're in a time of this before it's completely taken over the world and ruined um, life. But right now, it's a nice feature to have. If you know how to use it, you should be using it. It can save you a lot of time. I always say, work smarter, not harder. And... Fran utilizes it quite a bit for more professional emails, but I, I have to tell him, please send it to me because he will, I should bring one up for reference. I will on the next show because your email will be so. Um, that was in the very beginning when I started using it, that it's really worthy and it's really like, but I have learned 
when you learn to use chat you and know, you give to, the parameters. You know, the, the whole kind of vibe of like, to whom it may concern with the utmost respect, sir, madame, you know? And I was like, we need to throw in an error here because people upon conversation know you don't speak that way. But no, I like it. I was actually saying, I think it's a great thing, but I think it's nice to have a reverse editor on it. So he'll send it to me and I'll, you know, ha- cut it in half so and that add is the some other words. Of, of AI that you can, AI will learn to adapt. So if you give the right prompts, like I can give a prompt is like write this email and then use my tone of voice, use my tone of, of, of writing, like be a little more like me. It will throw something that sounds more broken. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Like, can you, can you please write me yeah. a very professional email? Like you just learned English a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Our next show, I believe will be coming to you from Mexico city. So we'll see if I can work on my Spanish. Maybe a little we'll have a live. Maybe. Yeah, I think we're going to try and do a live cooking with your mom. They make such great food. So that would be really nice. So we'll see you next week. Bye.